Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. Uh. I just gotta go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Yeah. I think 2023. Now for us, this is um, this is the biggest time of the year. I think I heard uh, Bo Robbo say it last year. You know that some people measure their years by things and not by Christmases. Now we're out here with you know a lot to prove. Uh, I think we're going on to our, our third think now with the truck and the twins' first think um, in the 10 car. They're finally in a car that. You know, we know that they've got the ability to put that thing up the front. And look, I think I know I've got the ability to put the truck up the front. We're back here with a whole new look for the race team. Uh, we've done a lot of work this year around the livery and uh, really getting the trucks more noticeable uh, out on the track. All of our new sponsor logos, everybody who backs us up, makes this dream a reality. We want to represent for those guys as well. The prep that the boys have done uh, coming into this year has just been absolutely insane. You know, we're organised. Uh, we're completely across it. We're running this thing like a business now. The prep sheets are in place. We've got the life cycles and all the parts. Uh, we're putting the investment into ensuring that the truck's going to finish. Um, but for this year, um, I think we've got our best chance and, and coming to think 2023, we're all, we're all pretty pumped. The level this year, the bar has been raised like just unbelievably. Uh, some of the, the programs that are coming into the sport now here in Australia, you know, these guys just aren't mucking around anymore. You've obviously got, you know, Toby Price out here who, um, you know, obviously does this for a living and he's making a, a big impact um, over in Mexico with Paul Will, who he's co-driving with uh, over there. Those two boys have teamed up. Um, I, I suppose the biggest one for this year is uh, Smoothie coming in with the, the all-wheel drive Mason with the Joe Gibbs engine. You're talking about a million US dollar uh, truck here competing um, out at Fink. And with a couple of the other big boys that are here, Bo Robbo's got a brand new Mason two-wheel drive. You've obviously got the two Tisco trucks. Uh, Shannon Wrench is in his new Jimco buggy. You've also got Travis Robinson back. He's been away from the sport for six odd years. And then you've got some of the old school boys that have you know, been, been running hard at this sport for a long time, like Greg Gartner. So I think for this year, the field is, look, it's anyone's for this year. The, who knows what's going to happen? Um, the bar has just been raised that high. You've really got to bring your A game um, if you want to compete at the top. The other big one for me is just the evolution of the, the spectators and the fans at the sport. You know, it's, you know, from the first thing that, that I went into, the crowds just weren't there, the people weren't down the track, there wasn't the level of cars that were out there. Off-road racing, I keep saying, it is a family sport. And whether you're a spectator or you're a competitor, it's still a family sport. You get to travel to the most remote destinations in Australia and being right here in the centre of Australia. You know, people are, are taking weeks off work, travelling out from, you know, coast to coast, right into the middle of the desert, the centre of Australia, bringing out their families. There's kids everywhere. Uh, the wives are really into it. There's something about Fink that, you know, it has something for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're really focused into off-road racing or not. The experience of coming out to Fink is, is what Fink is all about. Prolog, this sets up, this sets up Fink. You know, you cannot win Fink without putting down a good time at Prolog. It is just that simple. The importance of Prolog is having the ability to run up at the front. The first 16 cars, if you qualify in the top 16, you get to leave with a two minute interval. So you get a big break from the dust. Obviously, if you get off uh, position one, you have no dust, you have a clear run. After the 16 cars, they start leaving in one minute and 30 second intervals. So depending on how far back do you Prolog in the field, you pretty much first 30 kilometers of the race, you can only drive to the conditions of the track. And that's why Prolog is so important, especially for Fink. 
Now the twins are up first in the 1088 car for Prologue. Christian, um, he's the one that prologues. We've got two boys there that are both extremely fast, but they both have completely different driving styles. Christian is very smooth and very, very calculated. Ashton is all about risk, yeah? There's nothing wrong with either style, but I've, I've got this, this fatherly confidence um, that this is gonna be a good lap coming from the twins. Taking out of the first spot in 10 class, it's really yeah, like a dream I come true. Like compared to all of the other things, and it's just been like um, a really good to be able to get around the track and drive as fast as we can and just have fun, but it's also even better when you get first in class. So yeah, just can't wait to get on the track and send it. This is the best that the team could, could ask for with all the hours that, that everyone puts in to the cars, it is, it is really, really good to go out and get that first move before. Patriot Twins number one, these are the ones to watch this weekend. I mean, I, I haven't said it in public yet, but the career that these two have in this sport, yes, pump. Strategy for Prologue uh, today is is just to keep it clean and, and try and be fast. You know, try and be quick. Now, I typically always overdrive the car in Prologue. Uh, I just got to calm my nerves, um, get the car around there clean. I, I know that we can get around there um, quick and we can be somewhere up near the front. But um, let's see if we can get this done. Jazzy's just pulling out of the pits. Um, he's about to line up to do Prologue. It makes me nervous. And um, yeah, the dust is really coming in now. All the pro light buggies have just gone out first. Um, yeah, it really kicked everything up. But uh, that's Jesse.
good launch. Now let's see what Dad can do in that big truck with its new engine, but just from seeing that, that looks very, very nice. So let's check in when he gets back, eh? So prologue, um, look, not a bad result considering last year, um, but you know, really, really disappointed in myself again. Well, I think for this year it was went opposite what happened last year. I think with prologue, there's guys that will nail it every single time, the ones that can control their nerves. And I think just as importantly, have got all the faith um, in their car or what they're driving. Now we've made some massive suspension changes this year uh, with SDG. Um, and all for the good, but there's still something in the back of my mind that doesn't have the trust in the car. We set the car up on 40 inch tyres at race ride height, um, you know, full of fuel. And I think that probably worked a little bit uh, to our, our disadvantage. I wanted to be comfortable with the truck that I'd been testing in and the truck that I was going to race in. Now, typically speaking, everyone will go down to a smaller tyre, they'll lower the shocks, stiffen everything up, get a lower centre of gravity so you can tip into the corners a bit more. I think the reason for us, uh, or for me, was just hesitation. On the throttle, off the throttle, braking way too early. Just didn't have the confidence, and I was just, I think, so scared about messing it up that I didn't want to start worse off than I did last year. And I think it went against me. If you kind of cancel out the boys coming in first, 
uh, in their class, which I knew they had it in them. And, and what a result for their first Fink in a proper race car, you know, to take out the pole position in, uh, in class 10. Absolutely unbelievable. That puts them in 38th outright. We've had 150 cars at the start of this year. For the truck, we've ended up seventh in class. Again, not a horrible result considering the field that's there. And we're starting off 22nd um, outright, which is bad. That's put us under that two minute gap. That means that that, uh, that first 30K is gonna be absolutely horrific. We're gonna have to drive to the car that's in front of us. Uh, done better than last year, uh, but all in all for the team, it's, um, it's been a pretty good day. The logistics of Fink is, is something that, that's, um, it's wild, it's a full-time job leading up to Fink. This year, Sarah and I have taken just 100% control over, over the team and, and the logistical side of things. You know, Fink's not about the two hours that we're in the car on the way down there and the two hours that are on the way back. I think what nobody sees is the months of lead up that go into that of, you know, the sacrifice for my boys that, you know, are here in the workshop when they need to be putting in the massive hours, just ensuring we're, we're all working towards that one uh, common goal. So for this year, I've got some amazing help. Obviously, Pedro and Steve, um, you know, my two mechanics that, that work on both the cars. Uh, I've got Juddo, my best mate, um, who's been coming out to Fink uh, with me for a while now. Kent from High Talk has just been absolutely amazing. You know, this guy's got a full on business here on the Gold Coast, building the most high powered straight cars in the country. And he takes a week out of his time to come out, you know, and just support me as a mate uh, at Fink. And then obviously my old man and Sarah and, and Mia um, as part of that second chase crew and the, the support crew. Um, it's, it's a big job, you know, what goes into it. But I think this year, you know, like I've said, I think we're ready. I think we're more prepared than we've ever been. And um, I think we've got the best chance of, of getting uh, both the cars down there and, and getting them home. All right, that's it. The, day, uh, the team is out. This is where we, um, this is where we separate. So the transport is going to head down uh, to Fink right now. It's prologue day. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. They'll get in nine, ten o'clock tonight. Uh, we head back, get everything organised. We've got the cars inside all strapped up, ready to go. We'll be back here at about 3 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, Chase car will hook us up with the TRX. Sarah and Dad will head down to Fink, and so we'll see them in the township of Fink. Um, keep watching. We'll see how we go. Race day one, coming at you. Yeah. Bring it home, nice and safe, and we'll see you down there, mate. See you at like 10.30 or maybe just after. <laughs> feeling good, I'm feeling great. Yeah? Yep. You ready to go? We're out of here, my man. Send it. All right. We'll see luck. you Bring it home, nice and safe. We will. Do well. Yeah. We'll meet you down there. Bye. Mwah. Mwah. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Mwah. And be safe. I'm feeling good. I don't know. I did actually sleep really well last night, and I don't know. I feel positive about today, which is good. Feeling really good for the boys, eh? I think they'll bring it up nice and safe, and I think they'll do well. Here we go, race day one. Um, we just got the 484 truck uh, down here. It's about 4:30 in the morning right now. Sarah and Dad have already headed uh, down the service road. The transporters are uh, down in Fink. I got a message from those guys last night. Uh, Kent from High Talks just run back to the race shed to pick up the 1088 car. Um, we're not going to take any chances this year. We're going to warm the rear end. Uh, we're making a lot more torque than we have uh, in the past. Rear ends have always been a big problem for other cars down here at Fink, not for us, touch wood. Um, so we're just going to play it safe, get the transmission uh, nice and hot, get the diff all warmed up. Uh, game plan for today is go fast, 
risk everything. We've got nothing to lose once again. I want to better what we did last year. Um, I think we want to get through that 30 k's, that first uh, real dusty trade area. Once we hit the red soil and, and get towards the off-road club, uh, the plan is just to, just to send it. Um, so look, we'll um, we'll do our best. Uh, we're starting in a really good spot. Um, we've got a couple of really quick guys in front of us, but we've also got two guys that I think I'm faster of, like directly uh, in front of me. So I think that's going to play to our advantage. If I can reel those guys in real quick, let all the all the fast boys take off. Hopefully we get some clean air and we have a good run down into Fink. So um, it's up to the track now. See if we can get it done. Came out to Australia riding with Toby, but uh, we all we do about seven trucks out here, and uh, we like supporting the Australian races. They're definitely tough. The whoops out there are treacherous, but uh, they're fast. The speeds out here are, are really fast, and we've got to keep the trucks really smooth. So it's all good. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of weather around. It's going to be overcast, cool conditions for the cars, so uh, it's time to open them up and let them go. Um, well, the problem is it's been so damp that there's, there's probably anybody, you know? Like, you run some guys at the back there, and um, Gonna, there's going to be some clean runs had, and we haven't seen this sort of thing since 2008 where it's been this damp, you know, and that was record-breaking year. No, it was pretty crazy, but good enough for second. Obviously, Price, he's a freak, so um, he's going to be on. He knows I'm not going to be sitting back, so um, it'll be interesting, I don't know. But um, we're just going to push him, try and keep him in. Keep him in. We've got too many gaps, so it should be all right. We've got dust at the start, definitely, so just try and keep in that dust window and hopefully don't let him get away from us, you know, and just keep the pressure on. But uh, we end up tense, so we're in the two minute gap, and uh, so we're going to have some fresh air in front of us and uh, we can let this big girl go. And then hopefully we can uh, manage our race tomorrow. You know, I don't want to get down there and find out that we've got too big a gap to make up tomorrow, so we're, we're definitely going to throw everything at it today. And, um, you know, I think with the rain that we've had, you know, during the week and uh, last weekend, I think once further down the track we get, you know, past Deepwell, I reckon the soil change there shouldn't have much dust. So, you know, um, we'll be chasing uh, Smoothie in his uh, in the four drive Mason with the uh, big thousand horsepower Toyota engine. So, our uh, little six liter um, that we still got in the car, um, she'll be singing. Okay, so it's almost seven o'clock. People are starting to talk now, aren't they? It's coming alive now. So um, yeah, this is kind of where you get a little bit nervous, but um, we're not far out of Fink, so that's good. How long do you think? About another half an hour we'll be there. And it's going to be a bit of a different experience this time because um, we'll, we've got the satellite, so we'll be able to actually watch the live race. So we'll be able to track them as they're going down. Generally, when we're in Fink, it's kind of dead, isn't it? bit of radio silence you don't really know what's going on um, and we'll be in early enough that we get to see you know all of the fun and everyone coming through so I think this is an exciting one so we're at about the 120 mark now this is a fuel stop just before we get down to the water tank which we're posted at today pretty quiet on the road to be honest got through all the checkpoints pretty easily there's some crews back at the Redinga turn off chase cars as well as at about the 110 115 mark so we're at about 130 or 140 or whatever it is at the water tower so there's a good few service people that can sort of help out I guess along the way First car away, so Toby's on his way. So um, we're timing him already. We'll see how he goes, and then we'll monitor for the rest of the guys the whole way down. And I'm puffed because we just ran up the hill to the top, but and I'm potentially unfit.
Yep. Race day one, here we go. Uh, we're on the lawn. Funny when we get on the lawn during the race, it's like, it's euphoric. You know, I'm, I'm not stressed, uh, I'm not concerned, I'm not worried. You just got a job to do and, you know, it's, it's two hours of your life where there's just nothing else that enters into your mind. This year's going to be completely different, you know. They've had a lot of rain out here, it's wet, you know, and it's I've never seen things like this, you know. And the pre-running that we've done leading up to the race, the dust is almost non-existent. Once you hit the red dirt, once you get to the off-road club, um, it pretty much goes away and it's it's thick, it's heavy, it's boggy, it's going to put a lot of stress on the rear ends uh, this year. I think we're going to see a, a lot of them broken and, and drivetrains, um, transmissions. Um, but I think, look, for us, it's just about this 30 second intervals, you know. We, we do have one side by side in front of us this year, um, which is going to be a, prob a bit of a problem. We've had a chat this morning. He said if we come up, he's going to keep an eye out for us. So we'll be looking to get around him as quickly as we possibly can. Um, but the first 30 k's, we're just, we're just going to have to be patient. You know, when the track opens up, um, we'll just we'll give it out. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, drop it. I don't know where the track is. Everybody is dealing with this. Yeah, mate. Yep. Where is it? I don't know. Jesus, man. Straight. Straight, straight, straight. We're about to come onto the track, I know. Take the right now. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, 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 we're like five kilometres into the race and we're in like fourth gear. We must be doing 90, 100 kilometres an hour. It is a, a complete blizzard. Like the visibility is literally zero. You can't see the sides of the track. And um, just the last split second, saw a gate post, went to the right. I thought, nah, that's it. It's race over. And um, I, I got around the thing. But it comes back to, you know, that patience. You know, you've really got to be patient. You've got to stay quick. And the faith that I've got in my brother, you know, through these sections, I'm driving completely off of what I can hear, not off what I can see, what I can feel. You try and find the edge of the track, try and put your tyres on it and kind of just feel your way through it and you're listening to him. But um, that was close. Hopefully the monkey's off our back. That's it for the race. Five Ks in, another 222 kilometres to go. Um, we just got to stay patient and get out of this dust. Now the boys have been off-road racing with me for the past couple of seasons in you know my hand-me-down old race car which you guys have been watching through the episodes we just had nothing but dramas with it It was like every event something else went wrong i promised them after think last year that i was going to give them the opportunity to really really show what they can do because i had the confidence again as a father and as a team owner you know i've got these these assets there of these the up-and-coming drivers so we made the investment i bought them the 10 car and they're leaving the line at think for the first time with a very, very high chance of putting that thing uh, on the podium. Let's go, baby. We're just nice and easy in here, all right? Yeah. It's quite, it's slippery. Yeah? Yeah. Left stick, left stick. Yeah. By tightening at the end. Tightening at the end. You know, I know they've got the skills. We've put the work into the car. We've been working with Alumicraft back in America uh, a fair bit. I know these kids are the future of this sport. You know, I'm not going to be doing this forever. Um, and I want to get them prepared, you know. Putting them in the 10 car is going to teach them things that, that I don't know, things that I never learned. Two litre engine or two and a half litre engine, they can't rely on that right foot. They have to hit the apexes. They have to hit the braking points. They've got to get the thing through the corner smooth and they don't have the torque. So they need to learn the engine power band and the RPM. So for them this year at Fink, it's going to be a huge learning curve. 
um, but I'm, I'm quietly confident that, that we're going to see some really good results from this car this weekend. Remember, the race is not won inside of here. Yep. Nice and easy, guys. Yep. Left six, left six. Jesus. Yep. Take it easy, it's wet. It's really wet. Nice and easy, mate. There you go, we're holding two of these for him. Past about that 30k mark, and we're out of the just the general dust, and I start seeing bits of dust on the track in front of me, and it starts getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and you know you're coming up on someone, you're getting up on up on a car, and that's when your brain just you just go into pure kill mode. You know that's like, you know, a bull to a red rag to me, and it's just um, you know my brother goes into a completely different mode where he knows he knows what I'm like. He'll start telling me to settle down and take it easy and all the rest of it, but all I want to do is get past them. And when you see those flashing lights up in front of you, you get a glimpse of them, your eyes just lock in, you hone in on those flashing lights and you're just driving off that car and all you want to do is get around them. Sometimes it feels like you are behind them for hours, um, but now we're up on the first card. This is where the race starts. Um, let's do what we did last year. Let's start picking them off one by one. Now the boys are they're out of the dust too. They're um, you know they're coming past that 30k uh, point and they'll be feeling exactly the same way I am. You know, time to open it up. Uh, the boys are, are working unbelievably together. The car is performing. Um, it's just going to be a matter of, of Christian really keeping his cool and, and keeping this thing smooth and making sure he um, he gets it down to Fink. I, I gave him the tip this morning. I said, mate, look, you want to be smooth and fast today, but you got to get down to the other end and. Then let's, um, you're in first position, you know, as far as leaving the line, let's regroup at the end of today. Strategy's gonna be completely different uh, for me. It's just, you know, give it hell, nothing to lose from, from starting off seventh. Starting off first, there's, there's a different kind of pressure on him now. Um, so let's just hope that he can keep it smooth all the way through the race. Press, check up, press. Green, straight. Yeah. Check up, check up, yeah. check up, check up, check up. 
Justin's gone off the line, the boys have gone off the line and um, we're down here at Fink and we've never been able to do this before. We, we can watch the race live and we can also track them here as well. So uh, it's pretty cool actually knowing what's going on because normally you're just waiting here, waiting, waiting, waiting and you don't know anything. So um, it's going to be a different kind of race. Looking at this, Looks like Bo Robinson's had a bit of an issue, but he is making up the time. Justin's making up pace, he's just coming up to 6.01. He's actually really quick. So yeah, they're, um, they're coming up quick. To like 60 k's at Fink, and when you when you cross the road into Deepwell Station, that's where Fink really starts for me because you're starting to feel the car, you burn off the excess fuel, you're starting to get to the weight that you want, but more importantly, this is where the big holes start, and this is where the trucks really start to shine. Now. We've done all this work on the suspension for this year, but I haven't really had the chance to test it in the big bumps and the big holes. Uh, we're running a new seven liter, so I've got a lot more torque. We've got a new gear set in it. Done a lot of work around tire pressures. And when we got into those bumps, it just felt like it didn't matter how hard I pushed that truck. It just started eating up absolutely everything. And my confidence just went to 100%. And it was, you know, it's like I said at the start of the race, we're gonna go fast and, and risk everything. I didn't wanna just finish this year. I really wanted to show everybody what we could do and prove to myself what we could do in the truck. So we started putting down these times, we come up on the dust in Deepwell and um, it was James Cook in the 601 side by side. Okay, Left one, Crest Green straight, there he is. don't understand how that guy drives that uh, side by side as quick as he does. He's out there just winning everything. Every race he goes into, he's just minutes in front of the, the ahead of the competition. He did really well. Yep, good on him. But um, yeah, gentlemen, he moved to the right. You know, we hit the siren. He knew that we were coming. We had that discussion this morning uh, that he was going to keep an eye out for us. We blasted past him and um, yeah, I'm, I'm in just absolute like, sicko mode. Let's, let's go, let's get this thing down to Fink as, as quick as we can and, and really see what this team can do. Three, left one, left one. Left one again, left one again. Right 
just past the 50 kilometre mark and um, they're looking good. You know, the car's performing, Christian's driving well. Um, it's looking really, really settled in the bumps. Uh, look, at this point in time, I don't, don't really know what his pace is. I'm, I'm up in front of him and it's going through my mind, it's running through my mind, you know, are they still back there? Are they still coming? Are they holding their position? Who's passed them? Who have they passed? You know, those things are, are, are running through my head. You know, when I said earlier that you think about nothing else, you know, you still got two 19 uh, year old boys in a race car, you know, it's a, it's a dangerous sport. And, you know, as a dad, it's, it's, it's hard that that doesn't come into play. But a couple of times throughout the race, you know, my, my thought process definitely went back to them. And, you know, in, in one respect, you're a little bit worried, uh, but in the other respect, you know, you, you kind of trying to, trying to think about how they're performing. <laughs> Race kilometre 120, you know, we're back in the dust, we're, we're reeling in another car, we've got a pro buggy up in front of us, and we've been chasing him for probably about 10 k. so we were in a, in a section of the track that was quite dusty and it was a little bit slower, so, you know, the frustration was starting to build in the dust, obviously, you know, knowing that we're, we're trying to get, um, you know, pick up the pace and, and get down to think as quick as we can. Left one, right one, left one, right one, on this green, slow it down, mate, only one you can see, don't get excited. Yep. Yeah, green, green, green. And when we came up and we saw him now, obviously Jamie's on the radio, they didn't hear us, we're on the side and we're hitting the push to pass. The buggy's just not getting out of the way and um, the frustration just, just started building up. Now, you gotta kinda think, you know, when you're in a race car and you're chasing someone in the dust or you're sitting behind a car that you know that you're quicker than, it feels like a really, really long time. Even though when you review the footage and you watch it back, it's generally not.
Jamie's absolutely losing his mind. I've never seen my brother like that. And look, it was like, not in the race car anyway, it was kind of like I can feel his frustration because he knew that we were on pace. He knew that we were quick. He wanted the result as, as much as I wanted it and we just didn't want to be held up. So look, it got a little bit heated in the moment. Um, it was all good. At, at the end of the race, we actually went and had a chat um, to the buggy that we went past. He actually came up and apologised to us and we were like, dude, look, don't stress, you know, at the time. Um, we're obviously losing it, but um, you know that's all part of racing, and it's 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 um, it, it gets very passionate and very emotional when you're in the car. Yeah, race control, go ahead. Just eating the bumps, giving it a view. Bundoomba, that is the, that's just, that's the mark at Fink. You hit Bundoomba, your brain starts focusing on you going home now. We came in through Bundoomba and we're doing, we're in top gear, we're doing 192 kilometres an hour through the bumps and I didn't know it at the time but we were pushing that hard. We were six outright coming past the water tower and we were fourth in class so we were just putting the hammer down. I was driving the car as, as hard as I could, you know. I was up in 90, 95% of what I think my capability is and, and it kind of reflected in the times. But, you know, people ask me what it feels like at the top speed over the bumps and it's just, I can only explain it as violence. That's, that's what it is. It's just, it's pure violence. <laughs> my eyeballs were bouncing that hard in the sockets that I kept losing my vision, you know, through the big bumps. And Jamie is like, dude, you are absolutely ripping. And once again, you know, coming from my brother, you know, that sort of confidence, it was just the, the, the adrenaline that is pumping through your veins. And what you can put these things through is just, that's why we get addicted to the sport. And it is, it's, it's an absolute addiction. And it's those times, you know, like coming into Bundoomba, knowing that my chase team's gonna be there, I'm gonna pass the boys, we're hauling the mail, we are putting the time down. Um, I'm just, yeah, we're, we're just pumped. Bundoomba for me, that's, um, that's the highlight of Fink every year. He's on, on the pace, on like he's times. maybe three, four minutes behind Toby's pace, which is yeah. incredible, incredible. Yeah, yeah. So we weren't even ready for him. Yeah, we, were yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we were honestly like, oh, he's still two, three minutes away. And then we've seen his lights yeah. on the white roof. We're like, he's here. So. Now the 10 car is actually soaking up the bumps like a lot better than I, I anticipated. One of the things that we did do prior to Fink this year is we done a, a fair bit of work on, on the gearing in, in uh, this car as well. We put a new ring and pinion 
and the new six gear in it. Now, this uh, car was originally a pro light, so it was a three and a half litre. So we found the twins with the two and a half litre were having a lot of problems um, kind of pushing it up in, into top gear. We obviously went a little bit short. What we kind of discovered is, you know, and we, we discovered it at Fink, even at 40% throttle, they were tapping out on rev limiter and top gear at, you know, a top speed of like 135 kilometres an hour. So they were getting frustrated in the car because they just couldn't get any more top speed out of it. And on the 33 inch tyres, we had the discussion prior to Fink whether we should go to a 35, but we made the decision that we haven't tested on 35s in hindsight. Um, we really should have put them on a 35 inch tyre, but they're doing good, they're moving, they're, they're, they're still on pace. You know, the, the race ain't over yet and the, the time will show when they get into think whether that's um, really been detrimental to, to their performance today. Good, great, great. Down, baby. Terrain changes at Fink is what really catches you out. Now, this all comes down to pre-running. You know, the, the more time you can spend pre-running, uh, and I think it's like any off-road race, the higher ability that you've got to, to run good on, on race day. Now, Fink goes from big high-speed bumps to very, very, very slow, big, big bumps. Goes into high-speed flat, you know, gravel sections, just top gear, wide open, big twisty turns, and then you can check up and be back in second gear and you're in second and third gear through a section through, you know, windy, twisty stuff. And that can really, really catch you out. You know, up until this point, we've we've only made two mistakes. We've only blew two corners. One of them, you can't really say we blew the corner. I think we were just we had the right pace, and I picked the line before we entered it. And then we come into this tight, uh, twisty section, and that's just a general reminder. You know, like don't overdrive the car, don't push the car too hard because that can catch you out really quick. Left one, right one. happened.